Hi, I'm Amanda Call, and today I'm going to be revisiting an art supply that I haven't used in a long time. So if you've watched any of my live streams where I'm working on comics or some of my other comic making content, then you've probably seen that one of the things that I use in order to make my comic pages are felt tipped pens. Now I use these for panel borders and for the outlines of word balloons. And the reason I use them is that for one, they are not too expensive. They're very readily available. You can find these at pretty much any major art supply chain. Sometimes you can even find them places like Walmart. They're very easy to come by. The ones I use are the Faber-Castell Hit Pens. They have a nice dark India ink, which is nice and stable and doesn't discolor. It stays nice and black. It doesn't turn kind of like brownish or grayish or anything. And the two sizes that I use are I use the medium for the panel borders and I use the fine for my word balloons. And I've been using these for a lot of years and they worked just fine, but I kind of want to move on. So the biggest thing that makes me feel bad about using these is that it's a lot of plastic waste. Each one of these pens I'll get a few months out of, depending on how many comic pages I'm producing. Maybe it's four months, maybe it's six months, maybe it's as little as three months if I get kind of a lousy one. And so then I'm left with this giant piece of non-recyclable plastic because it's full of like metal bits and stuff. And that's just not ideal. I don't want to be making more plastic waste than I absolutely have to. And so if there's an alternative to these, that's what I want to try to use. That kind of puts me in a sticky situation because what's a good alternative for this type of consistent dark ink pen? So, I mean, you have other fine liners that are pretty much the exact same thing. It's still just a plastic felt tipped pen that's going to have the exact same problem where it's only gonna last a few months and then you're gonna end up with trash again. And while most of my inking that I do with a pen, I do with a nib pen. The problem with a nib pen is that it's just not quite as consistent for one thing. You don't get the nice, perfectly even line like you do with this sort of thing. And you also run into the issue of, while I'm very good at not getting my ink to run under my tools, it still happens sometimes. <laughs> you still run into issues where occasionally that little bead of ink just jumps right out from underneath the tip of the nib pen and runs across the edge of your straight edge or your ruler and makes a giant mess. And you know what? That's something that I'm willing to like deal with and accept when I'm already halfway done with a page, but I certainly don't want to start out a comic page that way. That's not, it's not a good situation to be starting with. So what am I left with? What's my alternative? Aha, tech pens. This particular type is the Rapidograph, Rapidograph, R Rapido, R this from Koi Noor. They make a bunch of different pens and inks and that sort of thing. And this is one of their big products that all you artsy folks have probably seen and have tried before and maybe you've had a set of them. So now if you were an artsy little teenager like me, you probably requested from somebody to get you a set of these at some point. They are quite expensive, so this was a treat if you ended up getting them. I had a couple of these in high school that my aunt got for me. One of my aunts who was always very um, supportive and willing to buy me fancy art supplies that I couldn't afford and my family couldn't afford, but she was always really awesome and supported me that way. So I had a couple of these way back when, and I really loved them. They were really fun to have like my first like really grown up fancy art supply. So basically the way these work is that you have a plastic body, which makes it easy to hold. Most of that plastic body is empty. However, there's like nothing in this. It's just to help you hold it and balance it. Um, and then up in the front here, you have this very carefully machined tip that has a precisely measured opening and it only allows ink to come out in that nice, even, perfectly measured line. That's the idea. There's a little ink reservoir in just the top part here. If I unscrew this, which this is made to come apart so you can access it, you've got a little ink reservoir here. This part comes off and you fill it with ink that you purchase separately and you have like a little bottle of that you fill it with. 
Um, and so this is the precise part right here. This is what makes this whole thing so expensive. And so um, precise is the way that this little cartridge is manufactured. The top here has a little label and is color coded. It usually matches like a band that's around lower on them. This one doesn't have it, which is weird. That's unusual. They're color coded and they tell you how wide of a line you're going to get. So that's all very handy if you have multiple of these so you know like oh the pink is is my bold one or whatever there are however some very major drawbacks with these pens which anyone who has used them will be familiar with it is a little bit fiddly doing the whole tearing it apart to fill up the ink cartridge and everything but i mean a lot of art stuff is kind of fiddly and kind of messy that part doesn't really bother me as much the really major drawback is that if you let ink sit in these, so if you're not using them every couple of days and then you don't use them for like a week or more and ink sits inside of them and you don't take them apart and completely clean them out, that ink inside of those little tiny, very carefully tooled pieces dries. And once it dries in there, you're gonna have a bad time. Koinor sells kits to help you try to clean out and recover these things once that happens, but ideally you just want to avoid that ever happening in the first place because the kits are not 100% successful. It's entirely possible you're still going to have little dried ink chunks in there gumming up the works and making your pen effectively useless. If you're using them, you have to be very conscientious about either using them every few days or in order to keep the ink flowing through it instead of drying up inside of it. Or if you're not gonna use it for a few days, you have to make sure you completely empty it out, rinse it out, run some pen cleaner through it, get it as clean as humanly possible so that when you go to use it again and you put ink back in it, there's no dried ink gumming up the works in here. Koinor also apparently sells these humidified revolving selector kits for $250. I mean, if these were a major cornerstone of how I made art, sure, I'd invest that kind of money to make sure that I wasn't messing these up, but uh, not spending that on the little perfect humidity controlled pod to keep my pens from drying out. I think I'll just deal with um, using them conscientiously. <laughs> I think that's probably the better solution for me. So I have a few of these that I've had for a long time, but of course, um, were they ever actually completely drained and cleaned out before they were put into storage for like a decade? No, of course not. Of course not. Of course, past Amanda and past people that Amanda bought these pens from. No, of course, none of us did that. Why would we make life that easy? So unfortunately, the ones that I already have are a lost cause. I'm not going to throw them out. I will try to recover them, but I'm not going to hold out a lot of hope that these little bits are actually still going to be any good. The odds are not in my favor. And the entire pen itself, as I said, these things are not cheap. If you want to replace the entire pen, the list price is something like $40. You can usually find them for closer to 30. But I still have these perfectly good sealing caps and handles. I've got several of them, so I don't need a whole new pen. Remember, I'm trying to avoid making more waste here. But, aha, you can just buy a replacement point. You can buy just this part. Uh, mind you, this is the expensive part of the pen, so these are still going to run for about $20, which is a lot, is a lot, considering that the pens that I'm trying to replace are like $4 each, but I will also bear in mind that if these continue to work for years and years and years, then it won't take long for me to have made up my money's worth in replacing these. That's what I did. I went on to dickblick.com, I bought myself some replacement cartridges, and now I'm gonna try to use my old pens and my new tips that I just bought, and we'll try to put them together and see how this works. And then we're also going to compare how good they do at the things that I use these pens for, which is creating panel borders and word balloons for comics. We're gonna do a little test of our tech pens versus our felt tip pens and see how they do. All right, so let's give this a try. Okay, 
So first off, I need to get the new pen points into the old holders. I bought replacement points that are the same size as the fine and medium pit pens that I've been using. I have a handful of old tech pens, but some of them are a little rough. The handle on this one is cracked from over tightening. I'll save it for spare parts, but I'm not going to put a new point in this one. I checked the rest of them for damage, but they all look good. Time to open one up. I hold onto the pen body and twist off the handle. Now to remove the old pen tip, I use a key to hold onto the pen tip and then gently rotate to loosen it. The key is sold with every tech pen, but if you get your pen second hand, it might be missing, and I have not found anywhere that sells them on their own. One of you 3D printer enthusiasts needs to get on that. Anyway, once the point is loosened a little, you can remove it the rest of the way by hand. And now you can see how much dried ink is stuck in this old point. Alright, time for a new pen point. Once I struggle it out of the package and remove the protective tip, I can thread it right back onto the pen body. You want to use the key to give it one last little turn. You want it snug, but not over tightened. Just go until it stops. Don't try to power past that. Now we can fill the pen. This is the ink specifically made for these pens, so it's a good idea to stick with it. Very carefully fill the reservoir just up to the fill line. After filling it, I also clean up the inside edge above the fill line so that no ink oozes out and makes a mess when I reattach it. The reservoir just pushes back onto the pen body and then locks in place by threading this little colored collar over the top of the connection. Again, don't over tighten here. Then you thread the whole assembly onto the handle and thread the cap on as well. Everything threads together instead of just pushing together to help create an airtight seal and prevent the ink from drying out in the pen. Oh boy, now the fun part. So to get the ink to flow down from the reservoir into the pen point, you have to hold the pen upright and then gently tap the bottom of the holder. Do not shake. Shaking is bad and can damage the insides of the pen. Just tap. A lot. Like, a lot, a lot. But after a couple solid minutes of tapping, starts flowing. Hooray! Oh, and since the new tips are not the same size as what the cap says, I gave them some labels too. Now it is time to test the tech pens out versus the felt tip pens. First up is word balloons. Here's the felt tip pen. And here's the tech pen. I had no issues working with the ellipse template. The pen was nice and smooth and didn't smudge at all. And the two word balloons are basically indistinguishable from each other. Next is the larger pens doing the panel borders. Again, here's the felt tip pen. <sighs> and my great big head. Sorry about that. And now the tech pen. This pen worked so well and so smoothly. I was going to just do the one tier of panels, but it was doing such a great job, I went ahead and finished making the panels for the entire page. And 
and again, the results are identical to the felt tip pen. One last thing to keep in mind with the tech pens is that if you know you aren't going to use them for a couple of days, you should give them a quick dip in pen cleaner and wipe them off before capping them. This just helps keep any residual ink in the very end of the tip from getting crusty on you. So how did it go? Great, uh, way better than I was expecting. Those tech pens did a great job once I got them working and I am super excited to now move over to using those instead of endless piles of disposable felt tip pens. Yeah, having to keep up with making sure that they stay clean is going to be a little bit of a project, but honestly, I would rather have a little bit more inconvenience, have to work just a little bit harder to not produce the extra waste and feel better about not contributing to the uh, giant global trash problem that we're all dealing with. We'll see how I feel about it in a couple of months, if these are still working great or if I run into too many issues, but overall so far this is a success. Let me know below if you have ever used any of the tech pens, either the Koinor version or a different version of them, and how well you liked them and what your experience was like. Also be sure to like and subscribe and do all the fun YouTube stuff because that's the stuff you gotta do when you're making videos on the YouTube. I appreciate it. Thank you so much everybody for hanging out with me and watching this adventure. I will see you next time. Bye. Sir, focus, focus, focus. It's not doing it. It's not doing the the Bewtuber trick is not where. Oh, oh, it's not working.